Okay, today we are gonna go over pencil and how to use this as a medium. So what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna open up your sketchbook to a new page, okay? Uh, you wanna hold it to be landscape. And I want you to take a moment, all right? I probably, I'm gonna suggest that you pause the video here and copy everything that you see on this page, okay? So go ahead and pause the video and copy all the lines that are on this page. And by the way, this is, um, this is not exactly even, okay? I wanna say it's probably about as, uh, about as wide as your hand, okay? And this is a little bit more. Good, okay. So, first off, um, the notes that I'm gonna be writing down, I want you to write down with me, okay? So I'm gonna move this to the center so you guys can see it. First off, pencil drawings are called achromatic. Okay, that means it's all pencil, all right? Now, when we're working with pencil, the best thing to do is build your values. So what does that mean? That means that we want to build it from light to dark, okay? All right, next one I wanna go over, okay? Um, we're going to write mechanical versus regular. All right, so what are the difference between a mechanical pencil and a regular pencil? Well, first off, you're going to find that mechanical pencil breaks very easy. They're great for uh, doing regular sketches, little drawings, but when it comes to actually shading, because of the pressure that you apply to create those dark values, they break a lot. So you might wanna invest in a couple of regular pencils, okay? All right, ladies and gentlemen, and last, okay? Remember, light to dark. Now, what does that mean? That means draw lightly, okay, and then build to dark. Because a lot of times what happens is when you're drawing something and you go to like correct it, so let's say I'm drawing an eye and I'm like, oh, I didn't mean to do that. If you draw it nice and light, you can make those changes, all right? But if you draw really dark the first time, if you go back to try to erase it, you get what's called a ghost line. Okay, so now that we have our, our notes here, let's get into the nitty gritty on what, what can pencil really do for us. Okay, so up at the top here, we're gonna divide this into, let's see, um, six sections. So let's go down the center and we'll just add two additional lines. We're gonna call this texture and design. So texture, as we know, is something that you can feel, okay? But it's also something that you can create as a look of, okay? Texture can be a design. So for example, um, my one book that I have here, I'll kinda pull that out, okay? This is, I love this book. See the texture that's created here? It's not something that we can feel, but it's just a design, all right? compared to smooth, nothing. So we can do thick or thin. Oops, let's try that again. Thin, all right. So we have thick lines, we can have like medium, and we have very thin lines, all right. So we can make, you know, texture and designs with these kind of lines. We can do um, different kinds of lines they can be bold, dark, they can be medium, they can be light, they can be sketchy, okay? Your direction could be like swirly, it can be zigzag, the direction could be dotted, okay? Stippling. So stippling, another word for that is like dotting, but 
definitely sounds a little bit more professional. These are when we put dots on. Okay, this is almost like grains of um, uh, like sand, or if you want something to look like it's got a little bit of um, like dirtiness, like you're like, I just wanna look like there's dust or something. Um, that's really good for that. And then tapering. So tapering and tapering is when you start dark and it goes off. It's almost like, like a, a flick of a hand. Okay, beautiful. Now, one note I want you to put over here is I want you to, that you remember that we're gonna build your color. Okay, so that's one thing we wanna do. And when you're doing texture and design, you can do this on top of your color, so to speak, your color, which will be your pencil or shading. So these things don't have to be standalone. They can be on top of other things. All right, so we wanna see how can we create some stuff, okay? What can we do with this? First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work with this smooth. So this is, this whole row that we're gonna talk about is a value scale. Actually, let me put that one down. Actually, let's take this word smooth and let's, let's put it in the middle. There we are, smooth. And in here, we're gonna have our value scale. So value scale looks like a shadow that's been chopped up into pieces, solid values. Now, remember when I said we need to build our color? And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start off very light. And how are you gonna see this? Okay, so you're gonna see it that I am being very, 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 very light. I am filling in all my space. Now, one thing about pencil you can do is you can actually blend it in a little bit with your, with the oils of your fingers, okay? I'll move this over, there we go. All right, so we can kind of blend that in. If you have something what's called a blending stump, okay, a tortillion, which is basically rolled paper, all right, you can actually blend it with that too. Now let's go next one up. I'm gonna put in my first layer. Then I'm gonna build it up a little bit so it's a little bit darker than the first one. Next one's gonna be a little bit darker, even more. Now this is where, if you had a mechanical pencil, it'd probably break. And the, the darkest one, all right. Now, how could these values kind of match up with the real world? This would be highlighted areas, okay? This would be kind of medium shadows, okay? And then we have a, a shadow, okay? And there's different kinds of shadows. I'm gonna kind of point them out for you too. So next thing we wanna practice is gradation, okay? So this is my gradation. Gradation is a smooth effect that goes from dark to light. Now, one thing I always tell people is I am not a fan of tornadoes, whether they're real or in the shading world. What's a tornado in the shading world? Okay, so you notice how I kept this wide all the way through? Sometimes people, what they do is they start off really wide and get really skinny at the bottom. And we're not gonna do that. So right here, we are going to do a couple of these because this takes a little practice. Do that here, do another one here. So we're gonna do this four times. Now, if you find that you're like, oh no, I didn't get that smooth transition, go over it, build it, and come down. And then one more time. All right, so let's put this all together. On this space, we're gonna make a circle. Um, how I make circles, I start at the bottom and I go a full range of my hands and you get pretty close to the best circle that you can draw, okay? Um, we're also gonna put a cube in. So I'm gonna freehand this. <laughs> um, a lot of people like to do what's called double draw. 
I don't like double draw in my class because I know you're not looking at the object. Uh, so start with uh, upside down V, bottom V, down, 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 box, okay? Uh, if you look at, use your observational skills, you'll see that that's kind of how it works. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in some shading. We're gonna actually put this in and we're gonna see what it looks like. So we're gonna pretend we have what's called a light source that's gonna hit right here. So that means the light is coming into that direction, okay? And the opposite side is where the shadow is. Now, you'll notice that I am not necessarily doing it going back and forth. I kind of go in in different angles, okay? Because when you have curved areas, you have a curved shadow, okay? That's kind of how it happens. All right. Now, because I'm smoothing this in with my finger, I need to make sure that my outside edge stays nice and clean. So that means I need to go and erase it, okay? All right, so what do we got? This, so we've got our light source, which hits our highlight, okay? This is a medium tone, okay? This is our core shadow, so a coarse shadow, by the way, is shadows that are on the objects. Last one. Shadows that go on the foreground have a name too. Some shadows fade out all the way. So if you can see my shadow right here, how it's dark here and it fades out, that's because the way the angle is. Some are very sharp like this. This is called the cast shadow. All right, so we got that. All right, so let's let's play around with this one. So we're gonna go light on the top. Okay. Now, when you have flat surfaces, they they do have a, a you know gradation to them, but not as noticeable. Okay. Sometimes it's a little bit trickier to see. So we're gonna make this one a little bit darker. And we're building it up. And by the way, if you realize you're like, you know what, I want this one to be a little lighter, take that eraser and just lightly bring off a layer, okay? We got the darker side. Okay. So this area back here would be the core shadow. And this would be your medium tones. And you can have various shades of medium tones, okay? And then we have our, our shadow, okay? Our cast shadow. Nice, very, very good. Okay, so let's go to our next one. We're gonna do a couple of different ways that we can actually create our own um, <sighs> type of shading with different ways. So we're gonna do what's called hatching. Hatching, here we go. We're gonna do the same kind of breakdown. You know, and since we're at it, I'm gonna write cross hatching in this one. And we'll just set this next one up. We'll draw our circle here. Well, that's a little wonky, that's okay. There we are. This will be a tall one. Okay, and then we'll do one more. Oh, that one's a lot better. Sorry, I'm much better at, at being sketchy than uh, straight lines. Okay, so hatching is not like a little baby egg going, it's really cute, but not for art, okay? so. Make sure we're gonna move this up, perfect. Okay, hatching are little lines, okay? 
all layered in one direction. The closer the lines, the harder you press, makes for the darker value. So we go further down, okay? The lines spread apart, okay? And so on, and so forth, okay? So when we do gradation, they're practically on top of each other, and then they get more spread out, okay? Now, how could this help us? Well, some people, what they'll do is they'll just use this as to shade their objects. Or what they'll do is you'll add it on top to give it another sense of, um, of being able to create those shadows and those darks and those lights. All right, what we'll do is I'll show you two different ways that we're doing. So first one would be um, putting our light on. So this would be our shadows, okay. I'm gonna press a little bit more. You see that my lines are, you know, some are going all the way across, some are just a little bit at a chance, at a little distance, okay. My shadow. All right, so we can kind of see how that works. All right, what does it look like when we add a little bit of color on the bottom? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a teeny bit of shading on here, okay? Just a hint, and then I'm gonna get a little darker, just like we did this one. All right, try to fill that in, there we go. Then we get a little darker in here. All right, so I'm gonna show you what it kind of looks like when we layer it. So here might have just a little bit, okay? A little bit darker. I'm actually we're gonna, uh, no, let's, yeah, let's, let's change the direction because it's okay. So I'm gonna add just a little bit to it. And this one I feel is too, too much the same. Okay. See how it just adds a little bit more? That's actually creating that texture and design. It just made it be from something that was dull and boring to a little bit more exciting. So let's add that shadow. Okay, that darker kind of shadow. Okay, now I'm gonna add those extra lines in there. Okay, just adds a little bit more. Next is cross hatching. Cross hatching is very much related to uh, hatching. They're kind of like cousins. That's a G, okay? Only thing different is instead of it going one direction, it goes, you got it, two directions. And the more that they cross, kind of like lattice, lattice is um, that stuff that's outside, probably by your garden, okay? The darker that seems. More spaced out, less crossing, and more, and like almost nothing, okay? Same thing, we're gonna repeat here. Remember, it's, we start off nice and together, and then it kind of fades out, okay? Same thing. Now, I definitely go back and I layer, because this is one that I absolutely love to do, but it takes a little bit more time to do. Notice I'm kind of uh, fast on this one. Um, I don't know. I find some are a little bit faster to work with than others. Well, look at that. It goes from dark, nice to light. Okay, so let's add this on here and we'll see what it looks like when we put it together, okay? All right, so we're gonna have our light, our highlight, our light source is gonna be here, so. We're gonna add our hatching first, and then, and by the way, you can pick the direction of where you wanna cross it is up to you, okay? And we can have multiple sections, 
multiple ways. I'm gonna cross it. There we are, that looks fantastic. So let's add in a shadow. Okay. So far so good, yep, okay. So let's add in our shading. What does it look like when we have it on a, an object that is shaded? So let's make this really light. All right, very nice. I'm gonna get a little darker in this one. Okay. Now, I know I'm going in all different directions, but what I tend to do is I do go back and I do blend it, okay, with my fingers. All right, and then we're gonna go a little darker. Nice. Now you can also see the different styles and how I, um, I draw actually from here, okay? Even though I am sketchy in this one, and this one is very solid in its drawing, you can still use the, these techniques in each one, okay? All right, so hatching, Adds a little bit, okay. This one's gonna be a little bit tighter. It just adds like that little extra to it, okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Um, only last bit of information that I want to give you, okay that will help you along this way of creating a black and white picture, okay? An, an achromatic picture is, if you ever need to create something that is black and white so you can do this, okay? Here's a tip. Turn your image that you're looking at, okay? So your, um, yeah, let's go image. Image that you're looking at into a black and white photo. This will help you figure out your lights and your darks, okay? Um, if you can, at the moment, be able to see those differences in a color, that's fine. It took me years to, um, to work on, be able to look at something and say, hey, that should be a little bit lighter, that should be a little darker, and you know, transferring it to pencil, but it's fine. Once you're done with this, okay, and you have filled your paper and you put all the stuff on it, you can upload it and you can start on step number two.